I had reported a few days ago, we're basically into that time of year again where it's U.S. college hockey free agencies and some of the top players coming out of U.S. college hockey are looking for contracts with NHL clubs, and we've already had a flurry of signings. In today's video, we're going to take a look at who was signed, where, and when they might be expected to make their NHL debuts, and that's coming up next. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's take a look at which teams in the NHL are trying to grab some of these top prospects coming out of U.S. college hockey. Now before we jump in here as well, I just want to quickly explain the entry level contract rules because they're all a little bit different. And the big factor here that the NHL rules in place with the CBA is the player's age when they sign their first entry level deal. Now if the player is between the age of 18 and 21, they get a three year entry level contract. If they're 22 or 23 years old, they get a two year entry level contract. And if they're 24 years of age or older, then they get a one year contract. Now obviously they still become an RFA at the end of those entry level contracts, but all these deals that have been signed here are a little bit different. And I want to make sure you understood the reason why each term on these contracts are a little different than the norm here that you normally see for players being drafted out of junior hockey because obviously most of those guys are signing their contracts between the ages of 18 and 21 so it's usually the standard three-year elc but in many of these cases coming out of college hockey it's a little bit different now let's get started with the vancouver connects who signed a defenseman josh tevis out of princeton university to a one-year contract now the reason for that one-year contract as i just explained is that he is 24 years of age because that contract's only a one-year deal, if the Canucks decide to put him into their lineup and burn that one year of the contract already, then he will be a pending RFA at the end of the season. So obviously, that uh, you know that one-year deal might only get him upwards of 10, 12, 13 games, depending on how much he actually plays here down the stretch between now and in the end of the season but Josh Tevis was looked upon as being one of the better puck moving defensemen out of the U.S. college hockey that were available here in his free agent class. Uh, he's certainly known to Canuck fans and to Canuck management. Tevis attended the Canucks prospect development camp last summer and actually I believe had an opportunity to play with some of their other prospects like Quinn Hughes who just recently signed as well. Uh, so really I do think the Canucks were very interested in this player and they more than likely will re-sign him as long as the rest of the year goes relatively well but at the same time he is a rookie to the NHL you're bound to have some growing pains there a little bit but uh, assuming he does play right away then he would be a pending RFA here at the end of the year uh, I don't think Tevis is the type of defenseman that's really going to wow you or impress you with super offensive skills or skating like a Quinn Hughes will but at the same time he is a very solid puck moving guy at least he was uh, at the college hockey rank so we'll see what happens here and how much of an impact he can have with Vancouver but considering where things are out with the Canucks decor I do think he'll be given a pretty decent opportunity to get some playing time uh, between now and the end of the year see where things go and you know really I do think that he would stand a pretty decent chance of, of cracking their roster next year even if it's in a bottom pairing type of role. The Ottawa Senators have signed right winger Max Verono to a two-year entry-level contract, being because of his age is the reason why he get the two-year deal. Of course, Verono was a right winger for Princeton University, put up some pretty decent numbers. Like many of the other guys on the Princeton University team, his numbers this year were down a little bit compared to years past. Uh, however, he still had a pretty solid four-year Princeton career. He put up 37 points in 31 games this past season. Like he said, he's from the Ottawa area. He's gone to their development camp in the past. It was no secret that the Senators uh, are certainly were very interested interested in his services as we know the Ottawa Senators have been quite big on trying to bring in as much local talent as they possibly can they already have a few other guys on the roster from the Ottawa area they seem to be really fond of the local talent there uh, and I do think Verona is going to get a chance to play here almost immediately it's not quite clear if he's going to get into action in their next game but very very shortly he will certainly get to play some games this year so since it's a two-year contract one year likely will be burned between now and the end of the year so he'll go into next year uh, with a one year remaining and then and he'd become uh, an RFA at that point. So we'll see how things go. Uh, no guarantees that Verona gets on the roster next year. They'll give him a shot now to see where things go. Then, of course, he can go into training camp and battle for a spot and see if he can make the big club next year or spend some time down in Belleville continuing to hone his craft and season his skills here. Now, the Detroit Red Wings have signed a couple of players, including a teammate of Max Verona at Princeton, and that's Ryan Kuffner, who's a left winger, uh, often played a lot with Verona during his time at Princeton, who's also from the Ottawa area. I know there was some talk about the Senators maybe looking at him as well, but I don't think they were really 
overly interested. I think they were more zoned in on Verona than Kuffner, uh, but obviously uh, Detroit has snagged him up here as a pretty good signing as well, considering where things are at with the Red Wings and they're trying to build as many picks and prospects into their system as they go through their rebuild. I do think this is a good move for them. Kuffner put up 44 points in 31 games this past year at Princeton. The year before, like Verona and many of his other teammates, he put up 52 points in 36 games. So obviously the production was down a little bit this year, but I do think that's more of the team just not being quite as strong overall. Uh, but Ryan Kuffner certainly seems to be a pretty interesting prospect. And considering I said where things are up with the Red Wings, I do expect he will get an opportunity to begin to lease some action here down the stretch, of course, because of his age as well. He also gets a two-year entry-level contract. The Red Wings were not done there. They signed another college hockey free agent, signing Terrell Hirose from Michigan State University. He's originally from Calgary, but it's obviously he's got ties to the state of Michigan, going to Michigan State University. So obviously the Red Wings probably had a chance to scout him quite a bit. We we're very familiar with this player. He does seem to have a good amount of offensive ability. At least he did uh, playing college hockey. So we'll see if that translates over to the NHL. And like Kuffner, I fully suspect the Red Wings will give him some NHL action here down the stretch to see what he's capable of. Uh, he also gets a two-year entry-level contract because of his age so if he does burn one year playing enough games down the stretch here then like his teammate here that we just uh, talked about with Kuffner they will have one year left on his contract and then be a pending RFA after that so a couple of good signings here by the Red Wings I think you know what some of these college hockey guys come in as free agents and some of them actually end up with pretty decent careers a lot of them are kind of hit or miss there's no guarantees here uh, but one thing for sure they usually come out very mature and NHL ready when it comes to a lot of the aspects of the game given their uh, you know their difference in age they're not 18 years old anymore and obviously even though they weren't drafted previously they've had a lot of time to work on their game during his time at michigan state university hirose's point totals improved every single year last year totaling 50 points so obviously a pretty solid season so it looks like the red wings have found themselves a couple of pretty decent looking prospects here both with some offensive upside so we'll see what they're capable of here down the stretch so all in all that's four college hockey free agents signed by nhl teams i do suspect there's likely going to be some more here between today and the coming days and weeks as these seasons of their teams wrap up obviously these guys are not you know fully free agents and can't sign NHL contracts until their seasons are complete with their college hockey team. So we'll see much more of this here, like I said, over the coming days and weeks as all of these teams wrap up their seasons. So certainly leave me your comments down below and let me know what do you think of these signings. Do you think any of these players are going to turn out to be pretty decent NHL guys? Certainly no guarantees they're going to be any big stars, but there certainly is some potential they could become NHL regulars here over the next couple of seasons. If you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up before you go. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching everybody. We will catch you next time.